Well, hey, it's Bruce Latch, and we're down at Timeless Arts Refinishing. We're doing a whitewash on some maple kitchen cabinets, and we're going to show you. There's lots of ways you can do this, and probably the most typical way that a do-it-yourselfer or a painter might do this would be to strip it and sand it and stain it white. Um, down at the refinishing shop here, we do things a little bit different. And for our white washes, we're just using basically a, um, a white pre-catalyzed lacquer. And it's, all I'm really doing is just thinning it down quite a bit. So this works really good for me. Um, it may not work for you. Um, you gotta have good control of your spray gun when you're doing something like this. So you gotta be, um, I don't want to sound conceited, but you got to be a very good uh, sprayer and be able to get good control over that gun. Otherwise, you're going to have um, shader burn all up inside here and everything like that because um, you're shading all that. So basically, all I do is, uh, like I said, this is a regular white pre-cad lacquer. It's already been really diluted down quite a bit, and I just kind of mix it 50-50. Um, so if I pour a it's actually kind of deceiving when I tell you 50-50. Um, it's really, really cut down, basically. It's almost like if you got done spraying white paint, white lacquer, and you uh, rinse your gun out with some thinner, and you have that white residue in there. You want just a little bit more than that in it. So it's, it's very light. And then um, I mix up with thinner. So you got white lacquer, extremely diluted down. And then, uh, here's some Corey to do a little walk around. Some of these are shinier yet. They haven't been, um, they haven't been, uh, they're, they're drying. So as they dry and flatten down, they take on another look. And I don't know if that looks like it does in the camera. Yeah, pretty close. So. And so out over here, we've got about 13 antique radios here from Washington and New York and Ohio that we're going to be working on next week. We've been doing a lot of pianos. We've been really busy, so we haven't done had time to do videos. That big German grandfather clock that I've got to repair. Anyhow, let's get back on the maple cabinets. Um, this is the back side here. You see it's already been shaded. Now, Corey and I had stripped these cabinet doors and drawer fronts down to raw wood. We sanded it, and then we just put two coats of a pre-catalyzed um, uh, top coat on it. Now, you can use sealer, but when you're spraying with pre-cat, you really don't need to use a sealer. But if you'd like to, you can. If you use the nitrocellulose lacquer, you want to go with a sealer coat under it. Anyhow, two coats of sealer on both sides. We sanded it, and then this side here's already been shaded to color um, with uh, pre-cat lacquer and top coating. So what we're going to do now is show you how we take a board like that and flip it into the whitewash with our lacquer up. And that all happens right here. Hello. Lots of times people uh, want to know, we got a little broken way for it, you know, what tip I got on my spray gun and all this stuff. I, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't. But what I do know is that this is a Craftsman gun here, and this gun has an um, air control right here, so you can really choke that air right down to nothing. You got your fan control and the fluid control. And these guns are perfect for shading. Um, and that's, so I've got two guns here, and this is uh, the shade gun. We use it for shading color. I'm using uh, white lacquer right now as a, to do my uh, white wash. So we're gonna let you see how we do this up close here. I got the fan choked all the way in. You know, anybody knows anything about a spray gun, choking it in. Fluid is right here, choked that way down. Right here, my air valve, I can almost just it's pretty much shut off. 
And you gotta have good control when you're doing this. Because you don't want to have shader burn all over on that stuff. So. After I shade it to where I, uh, as you notice, I played with my knobs a few times. I uh, opened up my uh, air vent and opened up my fluid a little bit, and I choked it back when I needed to. Now we just need to give it a coat of uh, 20 sheen free cat here. And uh, after this point, we put it over on our little uh, racks that we built here. We let it flash off, but then um, we got these doors labeled, so what we're going to do is, after they dry enough to where we can touch them, um, <laughs> we're going to match up the numbers so that they're setting up like the doors are set. But we're just kind of toning them all in. This is actually the second time we've shaded these. Um, it's better to have your material thin down a little bit more and approach it twice because if you have the material too thick and you spray it on and you lose your uh, your color and then you got to wash it back down so for me it's better to stay a little light get it with a couple of passes and uh, attempting to uh, get it all with thicker paint the first time so but you can see how that kind of flipped it around from you know where we went from this it's amazing how you and go take that yellow and cover it up and um yeah you could achieve this with uh by staining your stuff too but it you stain it you gotta let the stain dry you know 24 hours and then the stain bites in you know we're dealing with maple you get blotchiness um, i found that gun shading stuff uh works wonderful for me everything that leaves a uh, time to start refinishing is all gun shading it's the uh, quickest route to go so Oh, there you go. Um, it's a whitewash finish on maple doors.